Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar. We're excited to have all of you joining us from different parts of the world. I have with me here my colleague and he's the creator of Local AI. He'll be joining us and he's the um, coach for today. Today we're going to be talking about Local AI meets Kate's GPT. Analyzing Kubernetes cluster states locally with CPU at the edge and beyond. If you're a seasoned professional or you're just getting started in the field of Kubernetes, I believe that there's something for you in this webinar. During this webinar, I'd encourage you to ask any questions that you'd have. I'd also encourage you to share your thoughts and engage with us actively. After this webinar, there's also going to be um, a recording of this webinar on the CNCF YouTube channel. So you can go back and have a look at it should you miss anything. So without further ado, let's get started. My name is Ole Bube. Um, you can call me Bube because Ole Bube is very difficult to pronounce. <laughs> I'm a DevRel engineer at Spectro Cloud, and I've also been a software engineer for six plus years. I enjoy writing technical content, writing code, and sharing my knowledge. You can find me on LinkedIn at Olivebe Princess Ebuna. I mean, <laughs> the name shown on your screen. And you can also find me on Twitter as Princess Olivebe. So the S is just one. There's just one S, not two, um, two S's um, for Princess. And then on other social media platforms, you can find me with the same name. Next slide, Ettore. So, I'd like to uh, introduce himself at this point. Hey, everyone. I'm Ettore. Um, I am the head of open source at Spectre Cloud, and I've spent uh, more than 15 years um, contributing in the open source. Um, and I've been maintainer of several open source projects. Um, I'm the creator of Local AI. Uh, you can find me on Twitter as Madler underscore IT or on GitHub as Madler. Awesome. Andrew NG says AI is the new electricity and the same way that AI um, electricity is powering houses, that's the same way that AI is powering industries, businesses, and the future of work. AI has come to change the way we do almost everything that we do at this point in time. Most industries have seen AI disrupting some part of their operations and how they work generally. There are tons of tools that are being released every day that utilize AI. Some of these tools include um, ChatGPT. ChatGPT is designed to facilitate natural language conversations. So when you give text input to ChatGPT, it, re it returns human-like responses. There's also Dawn.ai used for generating images. Aside from that, there's CodeGPT, which is specifically designed for assisting with code-related tasks, including code completion, code generation, documentation assistance, and much more. The field of Kubernetes is not left out. Uh, AI has come to disrupt the way that we interact with our clusters as well. So what exactly is Kate's GPT? Today we have an exciting agenda. I'll go over the agenda first of all. We have an exciting agenda. Today we're going to be looking at an overview of local AI and kids GPT. Ettore is going to be walking us through the technical details. We're also going to be having a small demo and then a Q&A session. So what exactly is kids GPT? Kids GPT um, focuses on leveraging GPT within Kubernetes clusters to analyze your clusters. So the analysis of these clusters generates some information on what's going on in the cluster and it's transmitted to OpenAI, which in turn, returned, in turn returns results on what's going on internally in the cluster based on the information that it has collected on the cluster. It works with an external API to be able to do this. It's truly magical what KHGPT can do. So with it, you can enhance your SRE powers. It works great when the environment is not isolated. For example, with test environments, Kate's GPT works great. When it comes to isolated environments and air gapped environments, the question of having to expose sensitive information to a public API becomes a valid concern. That's where local AI comes in. 
local AI lets you run your LLMs on your own device or hardware. So bringing it to the world of Kubernetes, with local AI, you can now harness the power of AI to analyze Kubernetes cluster states locally, that's on your own hardware. This way, you don't have to worry about exposing any data to the outside world. So this is perfect for isolated environments. At this point, I'm going to let my colleague, Ettore, talk us through the technical details. Thank you, Bubi. Yes, um, so I'm going to show you um, what is local AI. Um, first of all, let's let's discuss a bit um, what it is. Um, it is an open AI API drop in replacement. So that means that your the software that you have already built um, and leverage the open AI API um, already works out of the box with local AI. Uh, what does it do? It runs uh, large language models uh, on consumer grade hardware. It leverages the CPU, so it works mostly on um, any modern um, computer, and it can also um, accelerate the, um, the computation using the GPU. Um, it uses open source models, which are provided by the community, and it is the perfect fit for air gap or isolated environments or small fine-tuned models or where the privacy is a big um, concern. So you can see the quick adoption of local AI in this graph. Um, and how uh, do we tie together Kate's GPT and local AI? So uh, local AI gives you the ability to run large language models on-prem. Uh, so you can install that locally in your machine or also um, inside the Kubernetes cluster because it have an Helm charge that you can already download and use. So first of all, Kate's GPT analyzes um, does, uh, does an analysis of the cluster state. Um, so it tries to find everything that doesn't seem um, right in the cluster and look at problems like uh, configuration issues, um, services not reachable, and on pod crashing, for instance. It collects all of those uh, analyses and feeds that back to the AI um, to enhance um, the error uh, with the more um, comprehensive message. So you have a little bit more of context on what's happening uh, with error. Um, so this typically works uh, by contacting the, the OpenAI API, so this is remote, uh, but we can swap that component now with local AI and do the inference completely locally. Local AI, generally speaking, is um, an OpenAI API uh, drop-in replacement. So how does it work? Um, it has um, um, a different um, set of backends behind the scene, and backends are um, C, C++. Uh, OpenAI is having Golang bindings, uh, so it can actually uh, leverage the models and run the inference locally. Um, since it uh, supports as a shim of the OpenAI API spec, you can use it to generate text, um, images, and also transcribe audio. And now, um, let's see the demo. So I'm going to show you um, now in this example how to, to bring up local AI. Um, we talked about local AI already. This is the GitHub page. Um, you can find instruction how to run um, local AI um, down here in the usage. Um, and here an, an example with using the GPT for all um, model. Um, so now we are going to try out this locally and we're going to see um, um, the bugging and analysis of case GPT. Um, of a cluster with a workload which is uh, having problems. So, um, first of all, let's create um, our cluster. Um, in this case, I'm creating the cluster locally and I'm using kind. Um, this will, will spin up a Kubernetes cluster um, using Docker um, in my system. Um, and afterward, I'm going to, to create a deployment and I'm going to slightly modify it to, to have an issue, like I cannot pull, um, let's say, an image. So now the cluster is up and running. I should be able to see all the pods. And I have already installed um, Kate's GPT locally here. Um, you can get it in the Kate's GPT. Um, in the case GPT repository here, um, releases for the binaries. There are also instructions how to install it in um, Linux, Mac, and all the um, Linux distributions, also for Windows. And 
so uh, we are going now to set up local AI locally so we are going to follow up the example over here so I'm going to copy paste this one uh, I'm going to clone the local AI repository first and then I'm going yeah, to just get inside it and the first thing you will notice here there is a models folders um, which is empty I'm going now to download one of the models uh, this model is free it's Apache uh, true licensed and given from GPT for all the IO um, and there are also the models um, that you can use uh, but we will stick to this one and try with um, this model over here so it's going to take a while And uh, now it's about to finish. So the model is about um, 3.5 gigs. Um, it gets partially loaded in memory, so you can expect you need some um, hardware, um, certain kind of hardware to, to run this. However, it works even on Raspberry Pi, but uh, it's very uh, slow to get answers from the model. So um, now we are going to uh, copy um, the template. So um, you, every model might have um, a default template um, to, to, to be able to talk with and the template uh, allows basically um, to interact with the model in a specific way so that the models are trained uh, towards a um, uh, specific prompt and in this case we are going to uh, use the the template for and GPT for all that was trained for GPT for all and then we are going to start local AI now, this is pulling the images, um, not um, the images right now are going to, um, to pull, uh, sorry, to, to, to compile um, the local AI API binary the first time that it starts. Um, we will have um, in the future releases options also to have the, the binaries, but keep in mind that um, it depends um, on the CPU, specific CPU you have in the hardware, uh, it will leverage uh, certain instruction sets, so um, it is uh, suggested still to run um, the compilation before uh, running the API exactly for this reason, to leverage all the instruction set of the CPU, so, and this can actually make the performance um, much better. Um, inside having a b general um, binaries so it's about to run so yes so we can see now the local AI it's getting up so as you can see the first booting step it's actually compiling the code on the machine and as soon as this will um, come up we'll try to to run an inference um, something locally to see if the model is actually up and running. It's about to finish. It's compiling calling binary. And we should see the API starting. So And there we go, the API is started, so I'm going to um, um, kill the logs. And let's have a look at the models folder now. So you can see we have the GPT for all model and the template file. Um, now, we are going to run this command just to check if everything is right. So, yeah, as you can see, we can um, see the GGML GPT for all model um, correctly listed in there. And we can try to ask a question to the model. So, how are you? And this is basically the the um, the first um, call that we do to the API. So, it will load the model into memory, and it will be faster on the um, next inferences. Meanwhile, we can also um, check uh, what's going on on um, the API over here. So, as you can see, the model loaded, um, you can have some extra output uh, with the bug options, so you can see uh, what's going on. However, um, take into account that uh, on CPUs, it, it depends, really depends on the, um, 
on the CPU model, but more or less this is the time that you can see. Yeah. So we have an answer, everything is ready. And now we can just try to deploy um, something that uh, is not working just fine in our Kubernetes cluster. Okay, let's set up then um, Kate's GPT to um, actually use local AI. We are going to see the instruction over the Kate's GPT project. It's over here. Uh, running local models. Down here, so there is a start the API that we already went through. And now uh, run Kate's GPT. So this is the model name. This is the backend. So we are going to authenticate the local AI backend with this model. So the model name is this one. So I have already provided for it, so I'm going to remove it. Um, Alright, so I'm going to now again. Right, perfect. So I have now the, the, the provider loaded in KGPT, so KGPT is going to ask directly local AI for things about my cluster. Now, I'm going to take um, a deployment from, directly from the Kubernetes documentation, so create a deployment. This one looks good, so deployment, YAML, I'm going to put it over here. And now what I'm going to do, is going to change the image and have some typos, right? So what about this bad guy? So I'm going to just see what's the class and now I'm going to apply it, deployments, there we go. Let's see what's happening. OK, so I have something which is not good in my cluster. Now I'm going to ask Kate's GPT about it. So let's see what it's going to give me. Now, what we can see, of course, it's it will be definitely more slower because it's running locally but and it's also bind to just use four threads over here but it's going to give me an answer very soon let's see so the result so error back off pulling image and this was our typo and the solution. So check the image existing in this cluster, check the pull strategy for the image. If the pull strategy is set to always adjust the pull strategy to pull if present and rerun the image pool. So now we get um, some real insight from the errors um, in Kubernetes. So we can check what was um, given into the logs and we'll see here um, this is the message that was feeded to the AI. So, um, simplify the following Kubernetes error message limited by triple dashes written in English. So, this is was the error message from Kubernetes back off pulling image, um, and this was the image. So, and that's all about it. All right, thank you very much, Ettore, for taking us through the demo. I hope you learned one or two things from the demo. Now we're going to be getting into the question and answer session. And I have just two questions on my table. So the first question is, what kind of hardware can local AI run on? Are there any hardware restrictions? Uh, that's a very great question. Um, so generally speaking, there are no uh, big restrictions as this is um, the, the backends which local AI um, uses behind the scene works also on uh, constrained hardware such as Raspberry Pi. But this is depending mostly on the model size that you are willing to run. Uh, so this is the reason um, I would suggest local AI also for fine-tuned models, because if you have fine-tuned models, then uh, you can leverage that uh, piece of technology um, more. Um, for larger models, you need very modern and, uh, and capable hardware. Um, and I would suggest also of GPU. But generally speaking, fine-tuned uh, small models uh, work um, very fine there. That's interesting. And then there's a second question, which says, security is usually top of mind for several organizations. Can you talk about how 
security in local AI, or can you talk about security in local AI, especially with respect to production environment clusters? Right, it's also a very good one. So um, I, I think local AI um, have a very good uh, sweet spot here because um, everybody wants to use open AI, uh, but the, the privacy um, and the sensibility of the data that you're sharing with it, it's very, um, it's very important, right? It's an aspect that nobody's neglecting. So I was reading news right uh, a few days ago uh, that several companies are actually blocking access to ChatGPT. I, I totally understand that. And in this context, um, when you are even analyzing the cluster data, uh, you don't want to expose any kind of sensitive data back to the API. So uh, it, I, I think it's a great fit uh, in this context, local AI. I think that's clear enough. Thank you very much, Ettore. For next steps, you can follow local AI on local underscore on local AI underscore API on Twitter. You can also check out the project on GitHub using the link shown on your screen. Uh, aside that, you can look at how you can make use of local AI in your own clusters using the link also shown on your screen. And with that, we've come to the end of today's webinar. On behalf of Spectra Cloud, I'd like to extend my sincerest regards to Ettore, who was our speaker, and to you all, our listeners today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bubi. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.